The Steam Ninja Scrolls arc continues, and this episode features the return of everybody's favorite chubby potato chip eating ninja, Choji Akimichi. Hello my friends, and welcome to another review of Boruto Naruto Next Generations, and it's the continuation of the Mirai arc. If you didn't like the last episodes, you're probably not gonna like this one right here. Me, personally, I think this is one of the better side arcs of the entire series, mostly because Mirai herself is just such a really fun character, and again, we get to bring back all of these classics. We've seen it from the last couple of episodes, with the return of characters like Kiba and Tenten, and now we get the return of Choji, who I have to admit has always been kind of a one-note character. I mean, he's fat, he loves to eat, and that's pretty much his defining characteristic. But it's really important that they would actually include him in this arc, as he was actually one of the former students of Asuma Saratobi, the father of Mirai. So it's really important that he's here so that he can sort of give some insight to Mirai about some of the ideals of Asuma, especially because she's still struggling with that big old mystery of who the king truly is. That information that Asuma imparted to his entire team, Shikamaru in particular, and Mariah is still trying to figure out what that means. Initially, of course, like most everyone, they think that the king is indeed the Hokage, but she's going to have to find out that answer on her own, and I have a feeling that's what this entire arc is ultimately all going to live up to, but again, what's really important about this episode is she's getting more perspective on her father and why she's so much like him. It's honestly kind of heartwarming in that sense. Overall, the entire episode, though, was incredibly simple, with Kakashi, Guy, and Mirai, and their brand new companion Tatsumi going to this hidden hot spring in the mountains, one that's very renowned. However, when they get there, they find that it's closed, not because they're out of business, but because a giant freaking boulder has just fallen off of the mountain conveniently, covering up the hot springs, leaving this village basically in a state of disarray, and only allowing the villagers to hang out and get drunk all the time. And this basically leads to a scene which I was really hoping they would expand upon a little bit more, with Kakashi and Guy having some sake. I thought this would have been a really funny excuse to see the characters have a drinking contest, seeing as how they always like to get into these little competitions with one another, and also it was just funny seeing them drink, because one, Kakashi is able to conveniently drink his sake without, like, removing his mask. Basically, when he's taking a drink, the giant bottle of sake is covering up his face, and he just, like, does it instantaneously, and you don't see how he actually pulls his mask down. It's always annoying when that happens, because every single time there's a scene with Kakashi either eating or drinking something, the dude never takes off his mask. He's still incredibly secretive when it actually shows his face. Guy, on the other hand, is an absolute lightweight. He takes, like, one drink, and he's just immediately freaking hammered. It is hilarious, but of course this is all mostly just to serve as exposition to show that this giant boulder has covered up the hot springs and the village is basically in trouble, and they really wish that some ninja would come to help them out, ironically with all of them actually being there. Luckily for them, Choji happened to be on a mission which was very close by, so he decides to stop and help. The problem is, the running joke with Choji is that he's always hungry, he hasn't had enough to eat, and the only thing that will quench his hunger is potato chips. That's always been sort of like the thing with Choji. He absolutely loves potato chips, and if he doesn't have them, if they aren't fried, and they don't have enough fat in them, he simply just does not have the power to grow into his massive form. So, that's when we get a scene between Mirai and Tatsumi and Choji as they go in the kitchen, make some potato chips, and she conveniently learns a little bit of, about her father, how she's so remarkably similar to him in pretty much every sense in terms of personality, while still resembling her mother just a little bit more. Also focusing on the fact that she lo shouldn't look too far into the future, and she should simply focus on what she can do at this moment. It's something that Asuma imparted to Choji, and some wisdom that she's getting from him right now. Eventually, however, it does lead to the big scene where Choji eats a ton of potato chips, transforms into his massive butterfly form, getting some help from the ninja and the villagers as they're able to push the boulder away, save the village, the hot spring is back, bada bing, bada boom, sunrise, sunset, let's get to the next episode. That is until it actually ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger, learning that Tatsumi is actually on this journey not because of the death of her mother and wanting to fulfill her dream of going to all these hot springs, but because there's actually a hot spring which will allow them to resurrect the dead. That's right, and this is going to be a pretty important thing because this will give Mirai possibly the thought that she could see her father again if she goes to this very spring herself. Are they going to pull it off? Does such a spring even exist? Will this end up being just a goofy side arc of the series? We'll have to wait and see. 
What's the rundown on this episode of Boruto Naruto Next Generations? While I know that a lot of people are not really enjoying this and they consider it filler, it's actually based on a novel series, so this is a completely canon story, and to be perfectly honest, I like it. I usually don't like this type of stuff, which is why it's surprising me why I'm enjoying it so much. Maybe it's just the fact that we're spending time with some of my favorite characters. Kakashi has always been my favorite, Guy is always a lot of fun, but Mirai just has so much personality, especially when compared to a lot of the main characters from the series. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Boruto, Mitsuki, and Sarada alright, but something about Mirai just seems a lot more fun and suited to being the main character of the series. Is it too late to just restart and call the series Mirai? I don't know. Maybe that's just the feeling I get from her character. She's just remarkably charming, super adorable, and I can't wait to see more of her growth as she tries to be a lot more like her father and grow to be like him. This is going to be an arc that's really important to her character, and it makes me hope to see her again. Although, let's face it, this is based on a novel series. Once this arc dies, we're probably going to see Mirai in very small bursts as the actual series goes on. Especially with the fact that the Boruto series is probably about to go through some big changes. There's a big announcement coming up for something involving the manga. My guess is the manga is now going to start to come out on a weekly basis, and that's going to change the pacing of the series, I think, for the better. If that ends up happening, that means we're finally going to start getting into the manga material, and trust me, you guys want to see that. It's getting really freaking good. But that's just speculation on my part. Otherwise, this was a fun, serviceable episode, bringing back some classic characters, and again, giving some great characterization to Mirai, who started out as kind of like a one-note side character, and has suddenly been thrusted into to the forefront as potentially one of the best characters from the Boruto series. So I'm going to give this episode right here a 4 out of 5. Just really entertaining, nothing that mind-blowing, but if you love these characters, you're truly going to like this episode. Most people will probably consider this a 3 out of 5, just kind of an average one, but again, I really like these characters, and that's why I'm enjoying this arc so much. So you heard my thoughts on the episode, I want to hear yours, tell me what you thought about it in the comments section below, and what you hope to see from the rest of the Mirai arc in Boruto Naruto Next Generations. Thank you all for watching this review, I'll see you all next time. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, for more anime and topic videos. I just did a high quality video on my top 10 favorite Godzilla monsters. You can find a link for that one in the description box below. If you guys have any topic suggestions or videos you want to see, tell me what they are in the comments section. And of course, one of the best ways to support this channel, aside from watching and liking the videos, is to check out my PayPal and my Patreon account. You'll find links for all that stuff in the description box. I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay down down. Baby.